All right, so get ready, because today we're going deep into genealogy. Oh, genealogy, huh? But get this, with a tech twist. Okay, I'm intrigued. What time do you start school every day? 7.40 a.m. Imagine getting to chat with your four times great-grandmother, hearing her stories as if she were right here. In the summer of 2023, my granddaughter Bill and I made this video together, working with her favorite ancestors. Back then, the technology seemed brand new, almost futuristic. But now it feels already a little old-fashioned because tech keeps advancing at warp speeds. This week, I ran our video script through Google's new Notebook LM. It automatically created a podcast with voices that sound almost too real. And unlike last year, where we wrote our own script, Notebook LM made its own script. So what you're about to hear sprinkled throughout the video with my granddaughter are Notebook LM's AI-generated voices reacting to AI technology. The AI generates the speech. Whoa, it talks too. It's crazy, right? It analyzes the text and like figures out the tone, the pauses, all that. And it sounds natural. Um, so what is this little gadget in your ear? Oh, that's my hearing aid. You haven't seen that yet? No. Oh, I got these recently. Myheritage.com has a feature called Deep Story that allows us to make our family photos speak and move. So when my granddaughter came to visit, we decided to get an old family photo and play with Deep Story. How does it work? Right, it seems kind of like magic. Okay, are we ready to do this video? I pressed record this time, so... <laughs> you upload a photo. And bam, you're chatting with someone from like centuries ago. It's nuts, right? Totally. We're gonna go with your favorite ancestor photo. I think you're gonna recognize this one. What's the secret sauce? Well, myheritage.com, they've got some serious AI power going on. Ah, AI, of course. Yeah, facial recognition. Since we don't have a photo of our Mayflower ancestor, we chose Grandma Lucy. She's a Mayflower descendant. Oh, with his wife, Lucy Brookins, your great, 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 great grandma. I wonder if she ever tried to comb his hair. I think that was the style. He's just a dapper guy. He does look like a really nice grandpa. So what about Grandma Lucy? We don't know much about her. She had seven children. Her son died of measles while serving in the Civil War. Let me pull her picture in here. There we go. Lucy died of cancer in 1871 when she was 56 years old, so it's, I feel like I wish she could have lived longer. How do you know it was cancer? She died in Vermont. Their death certificates, I can see them online, and it says cancer, and so that's how I know. So how do they know all that about Lucy? Did she tell them in this deep story thing? Well, it gets interesting here. Because the granddaughter actually questions how her grandmother knows about Lucy dying from cancer. Like she's suspicious or something. It's more like she's just curious. It doesn't say what kind of cancer. They probably didn't have anyone to treat it back then. That's probably true. We kept our script simple so that we could use video editing to make it seem like a conversation between grandmother and granddaughter. But you could write a longer biography and upload a series of photos to go along with it. I've already made a script for her. I'm gonna paste okay. that in up here. And then this takes a while. So while that is going, I'm going to get out of the picture and I want you to read these lines where you're going to be responding to her. I'm just going to get down here. <laughs> How come you don't have any more photos? Who is the oldest grandmother you know about? Wow. Are you sure? Or is this one of those maybe situations? <laughs> so how's, how's school going? I'm, I'm in summer. What do you do for work? I work at a diner. You're, you're a cook, a server, what? Both. Both? I just made you lunch? Hello. Yeah, because you're my grandma, that's how it works. Hello, Belle. I'm Lucy Brookins, your four times great-grandmother. You've seen pictures of all the generations up through me. And after that, we don't have any more photos. How come you don't have any more photos? Because, silly goose. The camera wasn't invented until 1825. The camera wasn't invented till 1825. Duh, of course. But it's funny because the animated Lucy actually mentions it. Like she's aware of the technology's limitations. It's kind of like a meta moment. Who is the oldest grandmother you know about? My six times great grandparents were Mary and William Brewster, who came over on the Mayflower. They are your 12 times great grandparents. Wow. Are you sure? Or is this one of those maybe situations? My dear, I am confident in this matter. Grandma, that's just creepy. I know, right? But we 
did it anyway. Because we could. <laughs> Creepy. How so? You know, like bringing historical figures to life. I can see it. It's kind of yeah. blurring the line. To play with Deep Story, go to myheritage.com forward slash deep story. Oh, yeah. Could I um, take your car? Oh, you want to borrow my car? Are you, yeah. a, are you a good driver? I'm a great driver. Let's not forget about how this whole interaction ends. Okay, what happened? After this whole chat with Lucy, the granddaughter just casually asks to borrow the car. Oh, typical teenager. It brings us right back to reality. So, I think we're done. With technology advancing so quickly, it's hard to imagine what our great-grandchildren will be able to do with it or how they'll explore their family history. But despite all the advances, the heart of a good family story hasn't changed in the last 400 years. I think it's pretty simple. Someone wants something, they face obstacles, they overcome them or they don't, and they're changed in the process. And technology might help us bring these voices to life in different ways, but it's still the stories of resilience, challenges, and change. That's what keeps our family legacies alive. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, happy researching.